As we prepare our house for the coming Christmas season, we would also prepare our hearts for the returning Christ. You came once for your people, O Lord, and you will come for us again. Though there was no room at the inn to receive you upon your first arrival, we would prepare you room here in our hearts and here in our home, Lord Christ. As we decorate and celebrate, we do so to mark the memory of your redemptive movement into our broken world, O oh God. Our glittering ornaments and Christmas trees, our festive carols, our sumptuous feasts. By these small tokens, we affirm that something amazing has happened in time and space. That God, on a particular night, in a particular place so many years ago, was born to us, an infant king, our prince of peace. Our wreaths and ribbons and colored lights, our giving of gifts, our parties with friends, these have never been ends in themselves. They are but small ways in which we repeat that sounding joy, first proclaimed by angels in the sky near Bethlehem. In view of such great tidings of love announced to us and to all people, how can we not be moved to praise and celebration in this Christmas season? As we decorate our tree and as we feast and laugh and sing together, we are rehearsing our coming joy. We are making ready to receive the one who has already with open arms received us. We would prepare you room here in our hearts and here in our home, Lord Jesus. Now we celebrate your first coming, Emmanuel, even as we long for your return. O, o Prince of Peace, peace return, return soon. We, we miss you so. Amen. Amen. We just read a prayer from this book, Every Moment Holy, and if you follow along on my podcast channel, you know that this book is near and dear to my heart as it is just kind of a companion to express some of the heart's desires in any season or moment of life, and we're excited for this Christmas season and all that it entails. And it's really different this year. And we've had a, quite a few years where it's looked really different for different reasons. I remember years when we had Thanksgiving in the hospital and our hearts were still full of gratitude and still celebrated how much we love our families even though we were separated by hospital walls and mm. hours of driving. And so this year as our, we are you know, there's space in between us and our family, but not in our hearts or our relationships. Um, and just feeling really grateful that for years and years, we have learned the practice of building relationships via the phone yeah. or, or FaceTime or whatever it is. And after years and years of practice, now, when it's necessary again, I'm not, I'm not stuck in the hospital and I'm really, really thankful for that. 
we can celebrate being together in different ways um, yeah. and safe ways. And I think a lot of the tensions that we feel this year of the pandemic and longings that we have that, you know, maybe we could be together or uh, just all the different hopes and expectations. I think it highlights some of the emotions that surround the Christmas season and maybe provide a new and fresh perspective. So I'm going to be talking about that on the podcast on my channel throughout this uh, Christmas season leading up to Christmas and some of the angst of waiting because that's what of a lot of this season is about is a, it's the waiting for a promise and it's when you're in the in between where you are and where that promise is fulfilled and in that waiting there's a tension but there's also this joy and this anticipation um, piece of anticipation and yeah. there's something deeply meaningful in that and so we're going to be talking about that on that channel uh you youtube.com slash living with hope podcast and so we're excited to have the tree decorated the stockings hung thanks for joining us today and as always we'll see you tomorrow good night good night and good night to the ollie boy you have the extra tree skirt did you think that was a dog bed okay